Hey guys, it's Miss Keenum. Since we're not able to go to school, um, I'm going to start posting some YouTube videos online that I think will be shared with you in your Google Classroom. So I'm going to try to keep them short. I may do several different videos of the same thing, but keep them short so that you can just watch what you need when, when you need it. So this first video is going to be an introduction to line parts. It's going to be part one of three videos coming. So I know y'all have studied line plots a little bit. Whoops. So what is a line plot? So a line plot is a graph that displays data as points or check marks above a number line showing the frequency of each value. So essentially a line plot, it, it doesn't have to be points or check marks as you can see in the picture, it's X's. Somehow you are going to show how much of something occurs above that number on the line plot. So the line plot is essentially a number line, but it shows data. So whatever our point is, so say like in the uh, picture, we have three eighths of something. So we have four things that measure three eighths. So say we are measuring insect species. Four insects measured three eighths of an inch long. And so because we have that frequency, the number of times it occurred, we're gonna put four X's or four dots or four check marks or four something above the three eighths inch mark. And you can see this number line or this line plot goes from zero to one. So we're first we're just gonna talk about how do we construct a line plot? So I think y'all have been learning about fractions. And so we know that a whole is made up of multiple fractions. In this line plot, we're gonna look at our data. So the data given is 0, 4, 2, 5, 2, 0, 4, 2, 6, 5, 2, 5. So we have 12 data points given, and we wanna put it on our number line. So this is gonna be pretty simple. So every time I have a number, I'm gonna go make an X above that number on the number line. So for example, for zero, I'm gonna add, if I can, a zero or an X above the zero. My next data point is four. So I am going to add an X above the four and I'm gonna continue to do this till I get to the end of my data set. So now I'm above a two. I'm gonna add another X above the zero because that's my second zero. Same for the four gonna add a third X above my two because I now have three twos, an X above the six, an X above the five, an X above the two, and another X above the five. So you can see in this, I have taken my data set and I have marked it on my number line to create this line plot. So every time I had a number in my data set, I put it on the number line to make my line plot. Okay, let's do another one. That one was whole numbers. But this one is where we're gonna incorporate those fractions that you've been learning. Okay, so you can see the line plot I have is just a zero, one, two, and three. So that's my whole numbers. But look at your data. The first ones are one, half, two. On the other column, you have one and a half, half again, two and a half. So looking at my data set, what do you think I need to do to my number line to best organize my data, mark it, and create my line plot? So think of that for just a second. Okay, so I hope you said I'm going to mark it in halves because that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, so here we go. So now my number line has been divided in halves. You see I have the number zero, half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three on my number line. So between each whole number, I marked the half. So now I'm going to add my data. So my first data point is one. So I add an X above the one. My second data point's a half. I mark the X above the half. Same for two. Another X above the one, because now I have two ones. That's my frequency. I have two ones so far. How many times one occurred? An X above the three, another X above the one, an X above zero, an X above one and a half, 
and x above a half, and x above one, and x above two and a half, and an x above two. So as you can see, so far I have four x's above one. That's how many times one occurred. If I go back to measuring insect lengths, you know, I had four insects that measured one inch, or I had two insects that measured a half inch. So I'm marking my frequency. Okay, let's go to the next one. So this one, once again, I have my line, uh, my number line, excuse me, it's, I have it at zero, one, two, three, and four. So the first thing we have to do when we're looking at how to construct a line plot is look at my data set. So what is my data set? You notice I have two and a half, a half. Ooh, I have three fourths. That doesn't match the halves. Skipping on down, I have two and three fourths. So if I have the fraction three fourths as part of my data set, what do I need to do to my number line before I make my line plot? So that's the first step you have to think about. Okay, so think about it. Am I going to make my number line just as whole numbers? Am I going to divide it into halves? Am I going to divide it into fourths? Am I going to divide it into eighths? You have to decide based on your data set. Okay, so you decide before I give you the answer. What do you think it is going to be? Holes, halves, fourths, or eighths? Job. We're going to do it in fourths because I had the data two and three fourths and three fourths. I knew I needed to divide my number line into fourths to create my line plot. That's the best way to show and organize my data. Quarters or one fourths is the best way to show and organize the data set given. So just as we've done before, I'm going to put an X above the two and a half, the half the three-fourths, the two, the three, the two and a half again because I have two somethings that measure two and a half. Two, once again, I have two somethings that measure two. One, two and three-fourths, two and a half. Oh, look now, I have three somethings that measure two and a half. One, one and a half. So this is how I construct my line plot. I look at my data set. In my data set, I need to decide what fraction do I need to divide my number line in. Um, you can see in this particular example, I made my number line all the way to four, but that wasn't really needed. I could have stopped at three. So that's something to think about. So I look at my data set, determine how I need to draw my number line, how I need to divide it off into fractions or whole numbers, and then I plot the frequency of my data. I plot my data set and I determine how often something occurs. So you may be asking yourself, why are line plots important? Um, just like a lot of other graphs, line plots give us a visual of something. We're able to quickly look at this line plot that we have. And I know I have three somethings that measure two and a half. Now, this particular line plot, it doesn't define what those are, but I can quickly look at it and know I have three somethings that measure two and a half. Or I could look at it and say, ooh, I don't have anything that measured zero. So from like a teaching perspective, I might use this in class to plot y'all's grades. So I could say, oh man, look, I had 10 students that made 90% and above, nine tenths and above. So I could quickly look and say, oh, well, that, that's pretty good. A lot of the class did well. Or, um, you know, I could use this out on the baseball field. If I wanted to plot how many strikeouts a pitcher got in an inning or each pitcher got in an inning, you know, I would label it zero to three, my line plot zero to three, and that would be whole numbers. I wouldn't go in between. But there's lots of different things that we can use line plots for but they are easy visuals to look at when interpreting data, when looking at a data set. It gives us a visual. Right here, you can go to this video of Khan Academy. He explains it way better than I did on how to construct a number line. It would be a great video for y'all to check out. Um, this particular link right here is just for more practice. It's a worksheet that you can print if you have the ability to print at home or just to download and look at and work through if you want to and need extra practice on constructing line plots. 
And lastly, this is just the references of where I got the line plot definition. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time for part two of line plots.